some big news happening in the world with loot boxes. You know, those things where you sit there, spend money in a video game to get cosmetics or specialized items, limited time items where you drop thousands of dollars in a video game for something very rare. This article comes from us from PC Gamer reporting the Australian government wants to slap games with loot boxes like FIFA with the mature rating. I think this is a novel idea at this case. Simulated gambling games may also receive a R18 plus rating. Now, this comes off the uh, the tracks where last year with Twitch, they banned people from playing slot machines and gambling games on streams. It hasn't stopped it, but at least they attempted it. So Australia may introduce harsher age ratings for games with loot boxes, including like FIFA or NBA 2 games. If changes proposed by the federal government are passed, the Albanese government announced yesterday its terms for a modified national classification scheme, and among the changes include a mature or a minimum M rating for games with paid loot boxes and a minimum R18 plus rating for games containing simulated gambling. This would have a giant effect on games like Magic the Gathering Arena and Hearthstone, where you actually spend money to get booster packs. This also would affect those. Or, you know, Apex Legends, where you have the loot box that they give you. It could actually create these games into a mature rating. Thus, it would probably end this type of thing. And either it would make it that the game is a mature game, which in a lot of cases they should be, or loot boxes just will cease to exist because they will no longer be a viable option on the market. Now, loot boxes fuel a lot of money and for cosmetics in a randomized fashion for a lot of games, but the cosmetics themselves will also support the game. So loot boxes are just a, another way to actually weasel money out of your pockets. They're one of those things that everyone dislikes when games comes out with loot boxes, especially when you talk about NFTs. Don't get me started with that because I, we know Square Enix was going that route with the non-functional tokens. That was the next step over loot boxes. So putting an 18 rating on a bunch of these games where they have this predatory practice, I agree with. It's not something that I would like to see on, say, things like Magic the Gathering Arena. I, I think the 13 plus rating on that game is more uh, appropriate because of the art and the, and the game and the strategy behind it. But buying things like a loot box you should have to have your parents input the info for the credit cards. You know, back a while ago, I spoke about in California how Hearthstone was being taken to court because the parents were suing them in California court to get back their money that their kid spent by illegally using their credit card. So there is a lot of aspects to loot boxes, especially when they're linked to gambling in new research. This one's from the BBC uh, back in April 2021. And then also Global News reporting on this just this month, how UBC research draws new links between video game loot boxes and gambling. Now, long time ago when pinball machines were first out, they were seen as a method of gambling because you could win free games. It wasn't until 1947 that the flipper was invented, and so pinball was illegal because it was considered to be a game of chance and not skill, and therefore gambling. And that moved along, and it was decided that they weren't an 18-plus item because you were getting fun. You were getting something out of it, and that's where the difference comes with Magic the Gathering Arena and Hearthstone. You do always gain something out of them, but ultimately, when, you have, when you're opening a booster pack, when you're opening a loot box for a cosmetic that could be resold, then it becomes a very big deal. So we'll have to wait to see where this really lands. There is so much more with all these things, all these schemes that, they, that these video games companies want to take in part and try and weasel 
take that hard earned money out of your wallet. You're trying to enjoy the game and then you get paywalled by a loot box where you have to open several loot boxes in order to reach the next step. We see this in mobile games as well. Uh, what is it, Hero of Legends or Clash of, Clash of Titans? Or I can't remember. There's so many different mobile games out there that use a loot box style technique. It, it just is very, very anti-consumer and it's not fun for the consumer to always have to shill out money. That means any game with loot boxes purchasable with real money could be slapped with an M rating, even a good old soccer game like FIFA, which normally receives a G rating in Australia for general audiences. On the other hand, changes would not affect games like Hot Wheels Unleashed, which is the last game I played with loot boxes because they can only be purchased with in-game currency, which itself cannot be purchased with real money. So that's the difference here. If you're purchasing straight up for money, where you're with Magic the Gathering Arena, you actually use an in-game currency to purchase it. So it could, there is loopholes there. You always make your own in-game currency and then you wouldn't get the loot boxes. That in itself, I think would be bad because then it, it doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't take away the problem. It just creates a hurdle that they can easily bypass. As for what simulated gambling means, uh, that refers to virtual social casinos or poker machines that can virtually uh, via usually via the purchase of virtual currency, eat up real money. As per the review content, it is illegal in Australia for gambling providers to offer online casinos or casino apps where players can cash out winnings. And so in the place have emerged simulated gambling games. Even then, it's not dead certainty. The proposal needs the support of each Australian states and territories. So this is a first good first step at trying to do some sort of regulation for loot boxes. I know in a lot of ways the the devs and these companies will not want this thing and they will probably lobby the governments to try and force this down so it doesn't continue. They and, and you, you know when Ubisoft or like with Apex they sit there and they lobby the go governments they throw money at them saying don't do this and then there's all us gamers out there and saying Loot boxes are predatory. They they do bad things for a lot of people and they need to be taken out of the gaming space. I don't have a problem with spending money on cosmetics. I, I think cosmetics are a great way to go, but a loot box where where things are are gambling in nature where you're directly spending thousands of dollars and to get something out of it that then you can resell and put into the uh put back into the economy like you see this with steam tags or or i think it's call of duty has like some skins some super valuable skins where they cost like a hundred thousand dollars for these skins and it's absolutely ridiculous to see these prices these price points goes through the roof Loot boxes are just a bad news for gaming. And at one point, there was a lot of fears that they would take over all gaming cosmetics and all and, and could paywall certain features of games, which would be very bad in the long run. Anyway, I am your proud Canadian Phoenix. Hope you like this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you all next time.